If you ever want to calculate your net worth, track your own expenses, or set a budget, then this video is for you. Rocket Money and you know the Forbidden Mint has failed me because it really does not allow for flexibility to give me that full picture of what I want. And if you want to track something like your net worth like this, or track your expenses by labeling it with categories, then this video is for you. Now, disclaimer, this is not a video to show off my finances at any means. This is simply a video to give you an overview of what you can do to automate and track your own assets, liabilities, loans, and expenses for yourself. All right, now that's over with, let's go to step one. Now, step one is completely optional, but if you haven't gone through this exercise, it will really help you down the line for really organizing your data model. So what I've done is just take my main sources of income that I received from my main employer, side work through my consulting and my real estate. If you walk that from left to right, you can kind of see where the money is going to be pooling and as well as, you know, the expenses to the right here. If you haven't gone through this exercise, I strongly suggest it. And let's go to step two. Now, step two in my mind is going to be kind of hard and don't expect to get this right the first time. I certainly didn't. This is my current solution on, you know, how to map out your data strategy from left to right. On the left, I just have all my main accounts and I put them into the subgroups if necessary. And I label if it's a manual, you know, workload or if it's driven by an API or if it's driven by Tiller here. Now, if you haven't heard of Tiller, it is a fantastic solution for grabbing all your main you know, popular accounts and getting the transactional detail into Excel. And I'll hint on that here later. From Tiller or from an API, I dump that into a local SQL server. From there, you have the flexibility to query or customize your queries to however you want. And what I did is I separated them into separate data flows here. I have a passive income tracker that's a little manual that I you know, dump right in the data flow. And then from those data flows, I put them into separate tables. And then all of those data flows and tables live within the centralized Power BI data model. That is where I do a lot of my DAX for a lot of my end reporting, but I do a lot of power query either within the data flows itself as well as in the data model for either like a pending or merging or things of that nature. What is Tiller? So Tiller is a fantastic solution in my opinion to you know really get off the ground running and you know if you don't have a lot of data analytics experience tiller will do a lot of the legwork for you and all you gotta do is connect your accounts to it and it'll spit out all these transactions and network based off of you know what you input it in there but in my opinion tiller is best used as just grabbing the transactional detail and that's where you can measure interest or by your budget how much you are actually saving from there tiller great solution i really recommend it for Taylor to work, all you gotta do is add all your accounts here, right here. And once you add them, you can see them within the connected account summary. And once they are connected, go in here to linked spreadsheets, or if you haven't done that already, create a spreadsheet, either within Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. And once you do that, just go ahead and click on that, and then that will bring it into Excel here. Now, once you connect everything, this is what it looks like in Excel. It just grabs all of those transactions and dumps it here within this worksheet. They come with a add-in within Excel of Tiller Money Feeds, and it is simple as updating this as just hitting fill here, and you can see all the transactions have been updated. This is super awesome, very easy to do, and you can even automate this further if you would like. Now there is a balances tab, which kind of shows you the breakdown of assets and liabilities. And what I've done here is just basically grab that sheet, dump it within you know something Power BI would like, and this is what I use as my current summary table within Power BI because it shows me my most recent counts value in real time. Now step four is I set up my own MySQL workbench and with a schema called net worth. This is local on my machine. This is completely free. You can definitely go through the cloud approach. But what I did in a nutshell is hooked up all my Python scripts and Tiller and every type of table into my MySQL workbench so I could query that into Power BI. Now briefly, what I've done is I have my Tiller summary, basically just shows my current account values, my Tiller master, which shows a lot of my transactional detail. Then I have a striker price, which is just basically my holdings at striker. And then I have Robinhood data, which is just showing my portfolio in real time. Then I have also my dividends that I'm pulling from Robinhood, as well as my crypto from Kraken. And then I also have my financial institution dimensional table, which is basically just an accounts table that has a lot of my external information that I would need. Once you have that all in within your schema, you can now 
query this and dump this into Power BI. Now, next step is to set up your Python scripts and I'll be the first to say it. I am not the best at Python, but I did leverage ChatGPT a lot and I was able to get a lot of my APIs working. And what I have done is I have created these scripts that go directly into my network schema so that I can query them for Power BI. My approach was to simply just put them on a schedule that updates pretty frequently so that I can do a lot of my transformations in SQL and it doesn't really, you know, there's nothing complex here, but mostly just grabbing it from an API and then <laughs> dumping that into uh, my SQL Workbench. And I've also done this with the Excel files through Tiller. So I have my roll up here as well as my transactional detail. Now this next step is to model into Power BI. And what I have done is I just queried from MySQL Workbench to create all these data flows with separate tables. And if we go into one of these, you can see I've queried all of them separately and I plan to append them within the data model itself. So I have one master credit card table and also one master bank transactions table and also one master current summary table. And I'll show you later, but if we open this up, I did a lot of my transformations within here and I made sure that I wanted to create this index so I can get really you know, granular in terms of my transactions as well as I have some separate tables that I have created separately within the data flow. Like for instance, my car, I wanna make sure that I have the value of that within my tables downstream. If we open up my model downstream, you can see that I have assets, investments, liabilities, and loans all within this one table here within the current summary. And if we go behind the scenes here, this is the table and all it is is saying, okay, is this table a asset, investment, liability, or so forth, and then basically create this master table, and this is what you're seeing within Power BI here. What I've done is for the other tables, I created a master credit card transaction table, which takes all of my credit card transactions and dumps it into one table, nice and tight here. You know, this might scare a lot of people. I've definitely taken a lot of time on this one, but the conditional column here has a lot of my categories here. So how I describe them is basically by the keyword within the description field, of my credit card transactions. And I know that might not be the best method, but this is the solution I've seen work and you really gotta dial this in. And here, this is where I describe my keywords. So, you know, Sam's Club or, you know, Trader Joe's for groceries and anything under the sun of my transactions I wanted to describe in here. And the important thing to know is that you want to kind of eliminate your payments. Like I didn't want to see my credit card payments for this exercise in terms of my budget. So I basically said, from my reporting, I don't want to see the payment. And basically if I had a keyword of payment in there, I classified it as so. So let's take a look at the data model. What's driving this? So if we go to the relationship view, it's pretty simple. So I have it set up where I have my date table here for any time intelligence. And I have my master credit card transaction table, which basically is appended of everything that I use my credit cards for. And then I have my appended master bank transactions table. Then to the side here, I have my Google Sheets passive income bank churning, and that is hooked up to my date table, as well as up here as my external accounts information or my financial institutions, as well as my current summary. So how am I performing right now? And I have that hooked up to my financial institutions. The next step was to make sure that I have my templates here in PowerPoint that I use for my reporting for Power BI. And you can do this to whatever type of software you want, but I really just did a very generic, white, clean look. And I use this for everything for my reporting because at the end of the day, I just want to understand my data so I can have the best insights. And I think this template really helps that. So if we go back to the reporting, you can see the templates in action. And for the main KPIs, I really wanted to look at and something you should consider for your reporting is, you know, if you have LLCs, I split them out between my personal and my real estate because I do a lot of spending on my personal cards for that, as well as, you know, the mixed percentages of the categories for my spending, as well as, you know, by budget. So I have a budget of 2850 and you can see I have missed it over the last couple months and uh, this is a great way for me to measure, you know, how I'm performing so I can save for my ultimate goals. So um, that is a great KPI I really like to look at as well as the points value to over here. I can measure 
kind of the credit card points I have received over the last year or so or two years, as well as the interest for my bank accounts and, you know, some passive income streams that I have used in terms of real estate and stuff. So those are some KPIs to consider. And I really think at the end of the day, this huge project is really to help you get the best insights possible. So it's either making more money, saving money and making sure that you're growing to your goals. And it really, this exercise has kept me responsible for keeping my spending down. And I have really seen how much I've paid in insurance or in food and drinks, and it has been alarming. And you know, this exercise has really showed me that I can be a better shopper and really be smarter with my money. So. you know for opportunity moving forward to really dial this thing in is you know you could do a lot of your categories within tiller or sql it's really up to you and how you want to do that i in hindsight wouldn't do it in power bi if i were you i do it more upstream i would also see you know if you can do a python script or power automate flow for tiller's add-on so you can just refresh the transactions right when they load into tiller so you don't have to do a manual upload or press the button for that matter also to consider is you know venmo cash app and any of those types of apps you know how do you want to measure that here do you want to attach that to your credit cards your accounts or you know deducting from your budget so those are things to consider and with tiller there's also this this concept that it runs you know a day or two behind in terms of transactions so it's similar to like a credit card so like you do the transaction then it gets you know held in this void area of waiting it for it to clear it's the same way with tiller it probably takes like a day or two for that transaction to clear and then you would see in your excel to their expense worksheet so that is you know a, a downfall of this approach with tiller but also it's not terrible at the end of the day so i'm aware that this is a step-by-step -step material it's more of an overview and to really teach you that it's very possible to do this um, within power bi and with this method and if you want to really drill in on a specific uh, area of how I did this, then please let me know in the comments and I will go ahead and make a video about it or at least uh, consider it. So if this brought any value to you, like, subscribe. If not, then uh, peace and I'll see you in the algorithm.